Hi, it's Robin. This is a follow-up video to the vinyl Easter egg from a couple episodes ago. As always, there'll be an index in the description below, so if you want to jump ahead to the new Easter egg that I have, just look in that description. So Electric Eye was Prodigal's second album, and it's the one that contains the Commodore 64 program. And this is their third and final album, just like real life. And I just want to show on the sleeve here that there are the quotes that were in the Commodore 64 program. They printed them in the sleeve in the following album. And thanks to my friend Richard for finding this album for me. And this album's actually really good. I've been listening to this a lot. Still lots of guitars, but also has a bit of that kind of new wave sort of sound to it as well. And just a couple points from that. I did not expect 300 plus thousand people to watch that video. I missed explaining a few things I really should have. One thing is that people endlessly kept asking me why did I bother with the cassette? Why didn't I just run the record player straight into the Commodore 64? Or why didn't I run my computer running Audacity right into the C64? The Commodore 64 data set uses this proprietary connector here. It's actually a digital connection, and that is what the cassette adapter looks like on a C64. It isn't an analog uh, eighth of an inch jack or whatever. Here's the back of the C64. That's the video output. And here's all the other jacks. This is the cassette port right here. There's the user port. And there's the joystick. The answer to all you people is, <laughs> I don't know how many there were. There were dozens of comments, I think, saying, why don't you do this? Uh, as if, I don't know, as if I don't know what I'm doing. Um, well, sometimes I don't. Basically, there is no place to plug that in. Now, there is an adapter that you can buy or try to make that, or you can modify a data set to accept uh, audio and analog audio input. Both of those are hardware hacks I have not done. I'm interested in them, but to me, they certainly wouldn't be easier than just using a cassette. Now, a lot of people theorized about the programmer of the C64 Easter egg on this album, TCB1984, that I thought was the programmer's initials were possibly taking care of business, a phrase that Elvis frequently used, and that TCB acronym is one he used. So that's entirely possible. And on to today's subject. Here's another record called Heartware. And on the cover here is some sort of circuit board with what, a flaming heart, I guess? And it was Maraca LP who informed me about this album big pig on the back, this special new edition. This is an album from 1986, a German record. And this edition of it has additional C64 software TV game. And that's got these strange instructions. Load return piggy space run return programmed by Alex Stiegman. This isn't such a hidden C64 program. They're, they're specifically saying it right on the label and even giving us the programmer's name this time. So I did a bit of googling when I heard about this and it seems that nobody has archived the game that is supposedly on this album. Hardware, by the way, is this Helmut Hatler and Jan Fried. This group I don't think was very popular at all. This is a one-off album. But these two guys are in a fairly well-known German Krautrock band. I, I don't know if they like the, that term, but that's what I think the press would call them, called Kron. And they're still playing. They're actually pretty good if you like Krautrock, kind of prog, fusion, rock kind of stuff. So we'll take a look at the record here. So it doesn't actually say anything on the record label itself. It's sort of like this is a second run, and the first run uh, did not include the C64 game. And the second run, they remixed some of the tracks and stuck the C64 program on. But if we can look here, there is a run-out groove that the needle stops and gets stuck at, and then a very dense section here, and that is where the C64 data is. I'm led to believe that it has a regular run-out groove here. We're going to try to pull this off the record, get it once again onto a cassette, and see what this bonus C64 game is like. All right, so instead of my cheap turntable, I listened to all you critics, and I dragged out this Marantz Model 2220. I don't think I've ever used this. I've, I've owned it for years, 
but it's been stuck under a, a table. So I pulled it all out and cleaned it up. It was filthy inside. I believe this is from the 70s. And uh, I got that working again. And I've got my dual 1218 turntable here, which is also, I believe, from the 70s. Okay, so we'll just give it a try here. Swing it over and we'll drop it down. Okay, so that's the end of the regular album. And then it hits this runout groove and there it will sit forever. The advantage of the way they've arranged the secret track here or the, the data track compared to the Electric Eye album is that automatic return tables will still be able to get to this track without automatically returning. The disadvantage is that for people just want to listen to the music, the auto return is essentially disabled by where they've put this endless groove here at the end. But it should make it a little bit easier for us. And by the way, I'm going to record this into Audacity. Hmm. It's interesting how the volume dropped down so much there. So this is a pretty long track. It won't make you listen to the whole thing. And there it is. It's about a minute 40. Okay, I've got that capture in Audacity. We'll take a look at it. Right, you can see there that there's quite a big volume drop there's the first section is a header and that contains the file name and then the next section is the actual program and there's quite a big dropout in the volume here which might be a problem okay i'm going to try recording this to my trusty aquarius data recorder which is a mono and i had good success with that last time and we'll see if that works i'm going to record to the second side of this new maxell tape i have last episode i used side a I had mentioned about how you can use a pencil to wind the leader forward. I didn't know that that would set off a whole bunch of comments saying you can't use a pencil. It won't work, even though I showed it working. <laughs> or that's too, that's too difficult to use. Well, <laughs> you just, <laughs> you just stick it in. I guess you bend it at a little bit of an angle, but it's not hard to do. What is this? Uh, Dixon. Is that a Canadian brand? Number two pencil. I don't know. The main thing is that it has six sides to it to match the six, whatever, spokes or teeth here in the cassette wheel. But I was told what I should be using is a Bic pen. But I don't know. I don't think I even have a Bic pen. I found this nasty one. Is this a Bic? I don't know. But it is six-sided. And yes, it is slightly easier to operate. I guess I always used a pencil because I think I was using cassettes when I was a kid and I didn't use pens when I was a kid. By the time I started using pens in high school or whatever, I had moved on to disk drives as well. Cultural thing, I guess. Okay, so I tried multiple times to record from Audacity to cassette, and I was getting load errors and everything. I'm not going to show you all that. And then I was trying to repair the audio, that volume dropout. I don't know, I, spent, I think I was spending hours on that. And I remembered somebody talking about converting the WAV file to a TAP file, which is an emulator format. So I did that on my Windows PC. So I used a couple programs, uh, Wave to PRG and Audio Tap by Fabrizio Gennari. I'll put a link to that in the description below. So I converted the audio from a Wave file into a Tap file, then back to a Wave file again, and saved it on cassette. I have a feeling that this is going to work. Basically, the audio signal that was on that record is just a bunch of waveforms going up and down. And every time it transitions from positive, from above the zero line to negative, that is what the data set sees as a signal and sends that to the Commodore. And then the Commodore is keeping 
track of time between those transitions. And if it's a short time, that's a zero. And if it's a long time, it's a one. The way it was recorded on that hardware record, I think there's some problem in the mastering, or at least in my copy, just with that volume drop and maybe other problems with it. But converting to a tap file gets rid of all that. And then it sends back, when you convert back to a wave, it becomes a very pure, simple signal. And uh, I think that's going to work. Let's give it a try here. Okay, here we go. Shift stop. Press play on tape. Hey, found piggy. <laughs> right on, this is promising. Okay, I'll press commenter to load. Oh! Having some trouble with that tape deck. I'm going to try this one. Okay, found Piggy. Let's hope it works. Okay, I'm fast forwarding this. Another reason I like using the cassette is just it's how the people who made these records and these hidden programs, this is how they expected people to use it. <laughs> yes. Programmed by AS, copyright 1986 by Wilkleg Music Production, Kofner Street 38, Berlin. Does anybody live in Berlin? Hey, hardware! <laughs> well, there. <laughs> this is, uh, this is kind of fancy. Okay, so I don't know, just gonna stay there for a while. I'll press the fire button. Got a joystick here. Nothing. Space bar. Ah! Piggy's Fatal Trip. <laughs> okay. Level 1 to 9. So we'll do 5. Speed 5, I guess. Here we go. Oh! Piggy! <laughs> so we can move left or right fire button doesn't seem to do anything up or down it's that little hardware logo up at the top this is just like those basic games uh well, I, don't know, I think every beginning c64 game developer made one of these because it's uh really easy oh it's getting getting skinny here piggy's fatal trip <laughs> come on piggy Ooh. Oh, piggy's tail. I got a heart. <laughs> Zit <laughs> zero zero forty six. So like I survived for forty six seconds, maybe. So there's a, a flattened pig, the hardware logo, and a stretched heart. That is really weird. So I don't know, I guess that means do I want to try again? Yeah. yeah let's try level nine this time. There it goes. <laughs> that is skinny. Oh, come on. Okay. That's enough piggy. So let's see. Oh, there, break list. And there's the program. <laughs> well, that was pretty long. But I guess it was uh, a minute 40 or whatever. I'll list this in white. This is where you choose the level. What's going on here? Turning on some sprites. 23, I think that's the sprite expansion. Okay, and here's where it prints the road. They packed a lot on that. Look at this line nine. That is crazy. They must have used some tool to make extra long lines because that is not normally valid basic. You can't enter that through the editor. But they must have had some sort of tool to crunch this down. So choosing some random numbers. Listing from 15 on. I don't know, here's, I guess that's the sprite data there. So, yep, sample some sprites in memory. That's in the cassette buffer. 
So I guess it's just three sprites in total. Well, we're not going to do a whole breakdown, eh? Reading the joystick there. Here's some sound effects. If you hold down control, it slows down the listing. Some printing. There's the control line 40 there for yes or no. Okay, and that's where you quit. I guess it resets. And some more sprite data stuff. Yeah, just sound effects. And there's the title screen. That's kind of weird. That's all listed as data. But I guess that's part of how it prints all the information on the screen, character by car character on the title screen. Well, there you go. All right, so that's Piggy's Fatal Trip. Well, look, it's not working on a rerun. I guess it, it never sets the cursor color. <laughs> Funny, it never resets the cursor color, I think. There we go. Yeah, it assumes the default blue. And since I changed the cursor to white, the text wasn't showing up on the title screen. Funny. Okay, so that's Piggy's Fatal Trip. I don't know if I would buy a record just uh, for that game in 1986, but now, since it doesn't seem like it was archived at all, I'm happy to have collected that record and uh, pulled that off of there. And the program will be in a link in the description below if you want to play Piggy's Fatal Trip for yourself. If you'd like to support my work, then please check out the Patreon in the link below. And thanks to these patrons here, for their support and thanks to darren folds for coding this scroller here darren is the programmer of the game invader which i featured on a previous episode and he's updated his game with this same scroll routine but obviously with different text so if you want to check out his game there's a link to it on itch.io below all right thanks for watching we'll talk to you next time Why record player to tape while you can play audio file directly from the faffing around with cassette deck which you transfer it onto tape was added by your method seem over-engineered, hence failing to the data from the computer to tape? Couldn't you can make a data set to a cell phone, etc.? Some guy writes, Wouldn't it to cassette? Load from a cassette. You have just patched your computer directly into any audio tapes? And that guy wrote, did you could just input jack up to use an audio cable, both male ends, and just plug an audio file directly from you can make a normal tape while you could just use your C64? I appreciate the Commodore directly. And again with the, why record player an unnecessary step? It seems to classic computer to the audio from your PC directly into the audio track totally digital. It probably would have done this playing from the audio to tape recorder and load programs that gives you found on fragile audio card interesting and load from a program that was a simple cable for releasing some tubers connect their cell phone audio from the data on a standard audio jack up this isn't the c64 cassette deck seemed like dubbing it directly from the cassette player